Why does Santa wear red? He used to wear blue suits and purple suits and weird yellow stockings. And what does Coca-Cola have to do with any of this? To understand why Santa seems to only have one red suit in this closet, like a proper fairy tale, we're going to have to start a long time ago in a faraway land. So we'll start with our first question. When did the story of Saint Nick originate? Well, it seems like the original Saint Nicholas traces back to a monk with the same name. Estimated to be born around 200 AD in Patara in modern day Turkey, he was known in his time for his generosity and his pious life. It's said he gave away his inheritance and spent his life helping the poor and the sick. He was known to be a protector of children and sailors and his feast day is December 6th, the anniversary of his death, which became known as a day when it was fortuitous to make large purchases and to get married. His popularity remained high throughout Europe and by the Renaissance he was one of the most popular saints. He was especially popular in Holland. But even though St. Nicholas's feast day was celebrated around the holiday season, that doesn't explain how this popular saint became linked to the Christmas holiday. So that brings us to our next question. How did St. Nick become Santa Claus and become linked to Christmas? In December, 1773 and 1774, a newspaper reported that groups of Dutch families celebrated St. Nicholas's feast day in New York. And Santa Claus came from the Jolly Guys Dutch nickname, Sinterklaas, short for Sint Nicholas. And in 1809, Washington Irving, known for writing Rip Van Winkle and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, referred to Saint Nick as the patron saint of New York in his The History of New York. And Episcopal minister Clement Clark Moore popularized the image of Saint Nick at Christmas time with his 1822 poem, An Account of a Visit from Saint Nicholas, which spawned the famous line, "'Twas the night before Christmas." And showing Santa as linked to the holiday became more popular as the practice of gift giving on Christmas gained steam in the US in the 19th century, especially gifts for young kids. By 1820, stores were advertising Christmas shopping to encourage people to buy more gifts and products during the holiday season. Soon, that spiraled into whole sections for Christmas ads in newspapers, many of which featured Santa Claus. <laughs> From 1863 to 1866, artist Thomas Nash drew popular cartoons of a Christmas Santa in Harper's Weekly. And in the 1890s, the Salvation Army had hordes of Santas on the streets of New York collecting donations. But Santa had a variety of get-ups over the years. He was shown sporting everything from a three-cornered blue hat to yellow stockings, a broad-brimmed hat, Flemish trunk hose, a red waistcoat, or a red robe. And Santa was known for both his wardrobe and appearance changes, with some images showing him as alternately tall, fat, slim, jolly, or stern. So that leads us to our next question. When did Santa start wearing his now-considered classic red suit? Well, although many of us may think it's cemented in tradition, it's actually part tradition and part advertising. As I mentioned before, depictions of Santa and his attire have varied, and there are images showing him wearing red robes, but Coke featured their first ads with a jolly Santa in a big red coat and white fur trim as early as the 1920s. In 1931, they commissioned illustrator Hayden Sunbloom to make December ads that featured a jolly red-suited Santa Claus drinking Coke to remind people that they could drink Coke all year round, not just on summery afternoons. Afternoons. He drew his inspiration from the jolly toy giver in Clement Clark Moore's An Account of a Visit from St. Nicholas. But even though the rumor is that Coke chose the red color specifically to match its logo, the company still states that they simply stuck with a color that Santa was already seen in before. So even though they didn't invent the image of Santa at Christmas or originate the idea of his red suit, Coke's clever ad campaigns to make people drink soda during the winter did help cement the image of one Santa, the fat, white bearded, jolly variety, virtually eliminating all the alternative versions that came before him in American pop culture. It seems like the power of advertising packs a serious wallop. But that leads us to our final question. Why did this style of advertising have the ability to alter a time-honored tradition? Like Santa, ads have been around for centuries. But one of the distinguishing markers of older advertising is that ads generally advertise new inventions or types of products by giving the public information on these new goods and how to buy them. For example, 17th century ads featured coffee, but they weren't aimed at having consumers buy a particular brand. Instead, they sought to introduce the idea idea of drinking coffee at all, and featured ads that linked coffee to high society. By the 19th century after the Civil War, US businesses were invested in economic recovery and advertising in newspapers took on an important role. In the 1860s and 70s, the first modern advertising agencies sprung up, N.W. Ayer in Philadelphia and J. Walter Thompson in New York. They started out by offering to take ads to newspapers on behalf of different businesses before evolving into writing the ads themselves. Also at the tail end of the 19th century, we started to see the emergence of brands, which were encouraged by the spread of pre-packaged products. 
Rather than going to stores with their own containers, customers began buying items that were already pre-wrapped and identified with a particular brand. And by the time the 20th century rolled around, ads focused on getting consumers not only to buy new goods, but also to buy already existing products based on specific brands were the norm. And Santa drinking a Coca-Cola is a perfect example of how modern brand-focused advertising evolved. So instead of listing all the features and benefits of drinking cola in general, 20th century ads were geared towards using print, billboards, radio spots, and slogans to encourage us to get to buy products from one company over another. And they started using powerful imagery, design, and jingles to get us to remember which brand to buy from. So how does it all add up? Santa in a red suit existed before Coca-Cola ad campaigns, but there were many variations on this tradition that didn't include soda or jolly fat Santas, because there were other images of skinny Santas, stern Santas, and even kinda scary Santas, and they wore all sorts of apparel and different colored suits. But the common factor here is that traditions are sometimes part ritual, part celebration, and part cultural representations. And it seems that some of the most successful ad campaigns of all time work best when they take an already existent behavior, red suits for Santa and make them seem like the only standard or tradition. Before you know it, a pitch for soda became a synonymous part of our traditional celebrations. So what do you think? Have any other resources to share on the origins of Santa's sartorial choices? Drop them here along with a picture of your best ugly holiday sweater and we'll see you in the new year. This week we were overwhelmed by all of your awesome comments and insights about women in computer science. Our first shout out goes to Bob C on YouTube who shared a great story about their time spent in the Navy and the lectures hosted by Admiral Grace Hopper. Go check out their amazing story on youtube.com slash PBS origin of everything. Janet Doherty on Facebook shared her own story of being a woman in early programming beginning in the 1960s. Check it out and thanks for sharing Janet. Tony Vasile on YouTube recommends that anyone looking for great women who are role models in tech, look up Lamore Freed, founder of Adafruit. Thanks for the recommendation, Tony. So the final comment comes from Mrs. Glunza's seventh grade English language arts class. They wrote me a really touching note about what they've learned from watching our video about women in computer science. These are some of my favorite comments to answer because I love hearing from students and teachers who are driven and dedicated to learning. You guys really made my week, so stay curious and thanks so much for your message. And I'll try to slow down in the future. Sometimes I get pretty excited about history. We'll see you in the new year.